What's up, beautiful people? Welcome to the lab where I offer my thoughts and reviews for the culture. If you are new to the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button so you never miss when we are in the lab. My name is Dee and I am coming, coming at you with the review of Peacock's Bel Air, season two, episode three. This episode is entitled, The Compromise. West Philly Will is back in the building. After leading the team to a win after an upsetting loss, Will and Bel Air basketball team are one win away from the playoffs. However, Tyler, along with some of the other teammates, are not feeling Will's need to place winning over everything. And Tyler doubts that Will can put the team first when the game is on the line. And he would be right because Will has his sights on making it to the playoffs and winning a championship. After all, the scouts and a pimp named Doc are watching. And I think this is going to be a theme throughout the season where Will will be placed in positions where he has to weigh the cost of winning. Is it the only thing that matters? In episode two... Will and Carlton uh, excited BSU and activated this desire to protest by conducting a blackout. Much to the BSU advisor chagrin, child, she wants Carlton to think very carefully about how such an act can impact his reputation and future, especially at a place like Bel Air Academy. However, the BSU members are still very much excited about that action and standing up for Miss Hughes. Carlton is overwhelmed and feeling the pressure. Miss Basson's warning lurks in the back and forefront of his mind. It's not a great recipe for someone who struggles with anxiety and is weaning off of his medication. Okay, so if the Banks family does nothing else, they gonna come together to support one another. And I appreciate seeing that on the screen. So we're at the Banks residence and it is protest central. And the cause is fighting to get Miss Hughes reinstated as a teacher because what did she do wrong other than decenter the white gaze and ensure that her classroom was an inclusive, culturally responsive, rigorous, liberatory learning environment? Ashley is feeling the weight and guilt of Miss Hughes' firing. The Banks family reassures her. You got to have hope that justice will prevail. And Ashley responds, but what if it doesn't? Damn, what happens for black folks when we see injustice after injustice after injustice on a consistent basis? Does our hope dwindle? Does apathy and disillusionment take over? Does the wave of powerlessness drown us and we fight to find our breath? So we go inside the bank's residence. We have protest stations. There's a station for making signs, open letters to the school administration, a station to make calls to other students and clubs. Yasmin, the Black Student Union president and Carlton's could be boo, does her president thizzle and thanks everyone for their support and help. She also emphasizes that their work is not just to fight for their teachers, but books that depict the Black experience. Honestly, I know that's right. Shout out to Zora Neale Hurston. Shout out to Richard Wright. Shout out to Alice Walker, Mildred D. Taylor. Shout out to George M. Johnson. Y'all got to check out that book, All Boys Aren't Blue. So anyway, back to the Banks residence. We also see Ty is here on his ally-ish, and he says he's not about to just stand by. But Tyler, listen, we don't need any more allies. <laughs> we need co-conspirators. There's a difference. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. So once again, Carlton's anxiety is activated. And, you know, he would just like to do this as quietly as possible with as little visibility as possible and as little shaking of the tables as possible. Before he can get in his head too much, Will tells him, Yo, get your behind over there and work with Yasmin's group. Yasmin and Carlton do kind of have this Aunt Viv, Uncle Phil vibe going on. I approve of this union. I think it's cute. Child, we have to look out for Carlton. In season one, when we saw him ingesting white powder, we thought for sure he was strung out on that stuff. 
However, we now know Carlton struggles with anxiety and his parents have agreed to allow him to wean off the medication and lower his dose as a trial, which is why Uncle Phil is asking Will to look out for Carlton and inform him and Aunt Viv if he notices anything off, no matter how small. Will agrees, and since I care about Carlton as well, I am on the lookout for any and all signs of stress, no matter how small. Will feels this is a great time to ask Uncle Phil about a pimp named Doc. Uncle Phil wastes no time telling Will that Doc is not the kind of guy Will needs in his life right now. And they would need to speak with Will's mother about any decisions. And baby, that's what I'm trying to figure out. When are we going to see or hear uh, from Will's mama. So Will is not trying to hear this. Actually, Will does not care to hear anything that is in, a, in opposition to his desires. Uncle Phil urges Will not to rush into anything that won't be in his best interest. And he does not feel that a partnership with Doc is in Will's best interest. And I agree, he is giving snake vibes. Baby, who is LaMarcus, though? Because we're back outside and Hillary asks Aunt Viv, what y'all think about jazz? We find out that since LaMarcus, Aunt Viv and Uncle Phil are no longer in the business of rooting for or against Hillary's boyfriends. Apparently, they wanted her to marry LaMarcus. Well, child, who is LaMarcus? And why didn't he and Hillary get married and why should we care? Because we love jazz over here. This is an I love jazz channel. So, you know, I do think this LaMarcus character is going to show up later and complicate some things. So a hater named Drew is pushing up on Lisa and he woos her with his stories of protest on the front lines, child. Not nah, for real. He reminisces with her about going to Minnesota for protests after George Floyd was murdered. Of course, they didn't talk about this at Bel Air because, well, Bel Air does not censor the reality and experiences of its black students because, God forbid, the majority group feels threatened and uncomfortable. A hater named Drew does point out that there are a million ways to fight the good fight, and he's right about that. Everyone cannot does not and should not show up to the front lines. I fought in the classroom and through art. I'm curious to know how are y'all out here fighting? What are you doing to ensure, you know, that the world is more just, equitable, and inclusive? However you're fighting, I just want to urge you to be sure to include self-care as part of that fight because this work it gets exhausting and it will wear on you. So make sure you are taking care of yourself as you are finding your way to contribute uh, to the fight and to the cause. Yasmin believes Carlton should give a speech during the protest as if Carlton is not already overwhelmed and struggling to disguise his anxiety. To get out of it, Carlton mentions the open letters to administration Yasmin counters that people have short attention spans. Child, they'll read two to three sentences, then be scrolling the shade room. And she's right because I got y'all for probably 10 more minutes before y'all start drifting. So let me move this review along expeditiously. Now, this is all about strategy. A speech from Yasmin would be expected as she's the Black Student Union president. However, it would be a surprise coming from Carlton because he's the school's model Negro. Now, these are Carlton's words, not mine. Compounding his anxiety, Yasmin says, we're trying to fight a system here. Carlton wants to belong, so he is continuing to disguise his anxiety and doubts, and partly because he wants to belong, but also another big part is that he does not want his parents to find out that he is struggling with his anxiety because they have agreed to allow him to decrease his dosage. So Yasmin is happy to see Carlton's commitment to the cause and is now ready to help him write this very public speech. Is there somewhere we can go that's a little quieter so we can be alone? That's what she says to Carlton. Child, I instantly thought about high fives. I can't wait another minute. You know how back in the day in the 90s when the instrumental would come on, 
and the artists would be, you know, before singing, they would start uh, talking. And so, you know, the lead singer on High Five, he's like, you know, I've been waiting so long for this chance. Can we talk alone? But I can't wait another minute. Hey, can't wait another minute for your love. I just want them to work. They so cute together. So we are back outside of the Banks residence, child. We keep running in and out. I know they light bill and, and air bill is high. Um, but shout out to all the black women who engage in self-care by saying no when you don't have desire or bandwidth to take on additional responsibilities. Um, Viv offers Hillary the opportunity to have full control to curate all her artwork and enjoy a competitive salary. And baby, I know it's competitive because I know they got the coin. While a boss chick named Hillary is appreciative of the offer, she has her own fool la la going on with the deal she is trying to close with Simply Spike Drinks. And so Hillary tells on Viv she needs an assistant and they both think Lisa would be a great pick. And I do too, because y'all know I'm sick of Lisa having mopey eyes in every scene, longing after Will. Baby, y'all know I love anytime 007 triple triple Jeffrey comes on screen, but baby, he came on the screen to let us know that Miss Hughes has shown up to the house unannounced to cheer her students on. Okay, let me be fair. Ashley invited her. Now, according to Miss Hughes, she was just trying to hold the school accountable for what they promised they would do update the readings and every curriculum. However, we find out there's an extensive approval process for said readings. Child, this ain't nothing but a system of surveillance that offers the bare minimum and call it progress. These are the kind of burning buildings black teachers are working in and systems that black teachers are fighting against. Come to find out, Miss Hughes was warned several times. Now, Uncle Phil worries that the kids may be fighting a losing battle. Shout out to Aunt Viv, though, because she considers that maybe they need to find a bigger battle. Child, they need to demand more around here from Bel Air. I know they're paying a good coin for that tuition, so I'm all down for demanding more. <clears throat> we cannot allow our beloved school to whitewash this crisis of conscience. Baby, that's how Carlton is going to conclude his speech and Yasmin approves. So, you know, Carlton is going to continue disguising his anxiety and these doubts. Yasmin affirms Carlton, though, in a way that he hasn't been affirmed by his peers. And they're about to share a kiss before a boss named Hillary interrupts. Girl, child, to be continued on the kiss. But back to demanding more. So they meet up in the foyer and... Um, Viv says changing the curriculum is a much bigger issue than one person's job. And I agree. Will says the point of a protest is to let everyone know there's a problem and Bel Air Academy has a problem. And I agree with that too. Carlton adds changing the curriculum attacks the problem on a systemic level, not just a personal one. We're going to take a stand. Well, all right, Carl, next. However, one of the characteristics of white supremacy culture that I want us to keep in mind is fear of open conflict, equating the raising of difficult issues with being impolite, rude, or out of line, and punishing people either overtly or subtly for speaking out about their truth and our experience. So in the next scene, which represents the next day, Ashley disappointingly reveals that she cannot attend the protest with Carlton and Will before she hands over the protest signs to Carlton. Apparently, Bel Air Academy blasted an email from the middle school saying no students are allowed to protest or they'll be suspended. Carlton feels the weight of this and he's like, oh, is getting real, but he promises to hang the sign outside of Ashley's class where she can see it. And again, we start to see these small signs that Carlton's anxiety is building 
as he adjusts his collar, which signals his throat may feel constricted or that it is difficult for him to breathe freely. Meanwhile, across town, Hillary is meeting with a representative from Simply Spike. And their drinks look good. I need to try that out. But she's meeting with this representative from Simply Spiked who informs her that a partnership depends on Ivy's participation as the deal will be easy to sell to her bosses um, if she pitches it considering Ivy has 10 million followers. We know that Hillary and Ivy had not been on the same page since the season started. And Hillary has her work cut out for her if she thinks the woman who is always posing with H2 Ivy is going to consider another brand. Well, it is an international company, so there is a possibility. We just have to see. We have finally arrived at Bel Air Academy and we are gathered in the courtyard. Carlton's physical dialogue reads so much. It is giving fear resentment and anxiety as his hands are clasping together we find out that any student not just the middle school any student who participates in the blackout will be suspended from school and extracurricular activities indefinitely i'm like child that sound like expulsion the powers that be are ensuring that the system and order of doing things remain intact and use the threat of expulsion to quell any demonstration of disagreement or opposition. And oftentimes the threat of punishment works. It has worked many times to suppress progress and change. We can look to history for many examples. When there is a threat to safety and livelihood, participation falters. Sensing this, Will accusingly ask Tyler, the ally, if he's going to withdraw his participation as well. And to our surprise, Tyler is still about that life. He tells Will that, you know, he's been thinking about what their coach said regarding living and dying as a team. And he says, if you walk out, we're walking out with you. Tyler is aware of his white privilege and the leverage he holds in society. And I want to talk about something Dr. Tiffany, uh, Dr. Tiffany Jaina argues. She says, allyship isn't enough when the world is on fire. Simply tweeting Black Lives Matter, y'all, is not going to solve a problem. According to Dr. Tiffany, quote, co-conspirators work alongside the communities they seek to support. They are conscious of their privilege and they use it as fuel to help erode barriers, barriers that are tougher for affected constituencies to surmount. Mm. So with that in mind, do y'all think Tyler is an ally Y'all think he's an accomplice or do y'all think he has reached co-conspirator status? Let me know what y'all think in the comments. So while the courtyard team is reinforcing this solidarity, Carlton, child, Carlton is having second thoughts. Okay. He's thinking about his legacy, um, his ticket to Princeton. He's thinking about what the BSU advisor warned him about. And it's a lot. And so he tells Will that he is just trying to consider both sides to which Will emphatically responds on one side, there's black people. On the other side, there's people who want to hold black people down. It's up to you to decide who you want to stand with. Woo! Did he just, did he just remix Desmond Tutu's stance on neutrality? He said, baby, pick a side, pick a side. So we call an emergency Black Student Union meeting and the email blast threatening indefinite suspension has caused all kind of chaos and discord amongst the members, which is what it was intended to do. West Philly Will rallies everyone by con considering that ain't no way they're going to suspend every Black student. And I agree. Carlton also agrees that the school would catch way too much social media heat and that they can use this to their advantage. He says, if we can point that out, we'll be in a strong position to negotiate a deal that's a win-win for everyone. And I'm like, I mean, I see where you're going strategically, but do we want an oppressive system to have a win or do we want to completely dismantle it? 
Will is obviously in favor of the latter. For now, BSU agrees to commit to the protest so that they can negotiate with the administration. Not going to lie. I for sure thought someone would remind Will that he had just enrolled in Bel Air and he doesn't understand what is at stake if something goes wrong. And I honestly thought that person would be Carlton or Miss Basson, but I'm sure they were thinking it. Child, Jeffrey been acting strange ever since Uncle Phil gave him the cold shoulder in his office that day. Jeffrey came to tell him that Will was playing street ball in South L.A. Jeffrey, what are you looking for? I don't like this new energy. At Uncle Phil's desk, Jeffrey is attempting a password to get into a file on Uncle Phil's laptop. Access denied. He's even trying to get into the locked drawers. And I'm just wondering, does this have any anything to do with the son who you decided to have a special arrangement for and that Uncle Phil made clear that you couldn't see? Uh, Bel Air Writer's Room. Are y'all going to drop puzzle pieces throughout the entire season and still leave us with no clear picture of what the H-E double hockey sticks is going on, child? We just got to deal with Jeffrey's passive aggressive attitude. Child. Anyway, Uncle Phil comes into the room and Jeffrey is just as cool as a cool, uh, cucumber, fake reading a foul and fake enjoying a cup of tea while we're still trying to figure out the tea in this son situation, I mean, I'll give it to Uncle Phil. He knows he has some making up to do and hands Jeffrey a gift, I'm guessing cigars, to symbolize a fresh start. And it almost disarms Jeffrey, but Jeffrey is not giving in just yet to Uncle Phil's charm. Anyway, Uncle Phil needs Jeffrey to look into James Lewis, his partner at the firm, who was acting real shady like when Uncle Phil came back. Uh, something ain't right with him and something ain't right with Jeffrey and something ain't right with a pimp named Doc. These men and their weird cryptic energy, it's, it's all over the place. All right. So we are back at Bel Air in the administrator's office with Yasmin Carlton, Miss Basson and Mr. Hardwick, the school principal, a white man. It's important to name that by the way, did y'all know that in 2017 through 2018, so like a school year, approximately 78% of public school principals were white? This is according to Ed Week and a few other sources, child. But I wonder what that number is today. Um, anyway, back to the principal's office at Bel Air. Ms. Hardwick informs Yasmin and Carlton. I'm sorry, Mr. Hardwick informs Jasmine and Carlton that he formed the DEI committee. We not heard that before, but he formed the DEI committee to review the curriculum, which Ms. Bass and chairs and claims substantial changes were made. We need receipts, Mr. Hardwick. We've seen this play before where black folk are placed in leadership positions nominally and as a symbolic gesture, but true change remains at a standstill. It is pacification at best. So Yasmin and Carlton report back to BSU the following things. One, students can go through with the walkout and no one will get suspended. Everybody claps, right? Two, Bel Air has agreed to review the policy that got Miss Hughes fired and there will be a curriculum review board with student members. Everybody, kept, everybody claps. But now they got to give them the catch. So... Here's the catch. Students have to agree not to give any signs, chant, or make any speeches. Baby, <laughs> Bel Air said keep it cute and keep it on mute, all right? And this is another example of white supremacy culture at work. And there are mixed emotions and Will is outvoted, much to Miss Basson and possibly Carlton's satisfaction because, you know, Carlton is like, oh, I'm off the hook. I ain't got to get no speech, baby. We good. But Will reminds Carlton, if they're okay with what you're doing, then you're doing it wrong. Yasmin is on the same page with Will, right? And they devise a top secret plan to go along with the go along and then strike. Will is standing his ground. He said protests are supposed to blank with authority. And that's exactly what he wants to do. 
Baby, we back over here in this dysfunctional relationship between Hillary and Ivy. And to be honest, ladies, y'all are in my last spirit. Hillary is working overtime to get Ivy on board with this sim Simply Spike partnership that she believes uh, will be a big deal for the influencer house. And Ivy ain't going. Ivy tells Hillary that her lawyers advised her not to endorse the competition much to Hillary's disbelief because she's like, baby, don't nobody even know what H2IV is. This is an international brand. Um, Ivy said that she ain't doing it, period, poo. What is Hillary Hillary's response to Ivy's boundary? She texts the Simply Spike representative that she is looking forward to closing the deal. <sighs> Their communication and lack of respect for boundaries is screaming we need to sit down with a third party mediator because this is only going to get worse. Honey, back at Bel Air, the clock is ticking and the clock struck 11. Carlton leads the walkout and I want you to pay attention to how the school rallies behind Carlton because it's going to be pivotal in the beginning scenes of episode four. There's going to be a juxtaposition. But anyway, keep in mind that Carlton has been disguising his anxiety since they decided to go forward with the walkout and the pressure to go all out builds as his peers ambush him in the courtyard to do a video and hop on a table to make an impassioned speech, a speech where he indicts Bel Air and its culture. And we see Yasmin surrounded by whiteness as her protest signs are confiscated and she calls out for Carlton. And I feel so bad for Carlton. He is literally frozen in place as the expectations from various sides rain down on him until he flees. As Will works to calm Carlton during what is clearly a panic attack, Carlton threatens Will that he better not tell his parents. We know Carlton wants to be independent of his medication and his parents would surely increase his dosage if they knew what was happening with him at this moment. So seeing his cousin in this condition, Will decides to take matters into his own hands and he takes lead on the walkout, snatches the sign from the security guard, runs up to the roof and drops the Black Teachers Matter sign. Will then raises his fist and chants, Black teachers matter. Black teachers matter. And the tension pulsing through the screen, the imagery, the response from the crowd, the awe and pride that emotes from Ashley's face, the sign displayed across the walls of an institution that suppress suppresses the experience of its Black students. It is so stirring. It's it's a love letter to Black educators everywhere. It's a moment in cinematic history that for me will remain with me forever. Peacock Writers Room, y'all did this right. Thank you for seeing us, hearing us, and honoring our experience. All right, before we close, I just want to say mental health is wealth. So if you have the capacity, please consider donating to either or both of the therapy funds below. Um, with the barriers affect, affecting access to treatment by members of diverse ethnic and racial groups, the Loveland Therapy Fund provides financial assistance to Black women and girls seeking therapy nationally. It's such a great cause to, to consider donating to. And then um, there's another fund, the Mental Health Liberation BIPOC Therapy Fund. And it is an extension of efforts to provide free quality therapy for us melanated folks. As I said earlier, doing this work and being a part of this fight, it's so important to engage in self-care and ensure that you are protecting your mental health, but also in service to your mental health. So those are two that you can consider donating to. And all right, beautiful people, I know you enjoyed this review, so go ahead and hit the like button. You should already be subscribed. And I want to know what came up for you. So make sure you drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't be shy. Share this video on your social media platforms. Be safe. Be you. Be light. 
and I will holler at y'all next time.